four things that kind of stand out in this conversation between Nicodemus and the baptizer. It's one of them. Anything there hit you? Nicodemus is a little lost. Yeah. What's that? John, John knows what's happening. Uh, he, is the, he is the one sent ahead of Jesus, yeah. Anybody else? Yeah, yeah. There'll, there'll be a change in that. Um, what about the conversation between Simon and his wife whom the writers of this series have chosen to call Eden? Uh, Simon's clearly nervous to tell her what has happened. But her response is what? To say, this is the man I married? And then you couldn't make this up. <laughs> it's great. You're more than a fisherman. You have to go with him. Not that I feel abandoned. I feel saved. Uh, that's a beautiful notion, isn't it? Yeah. And, you know, again, we don't know anything about Simon's wife. We know he's married because he has a mother-in-law who has, who has an illness later on in, in the Gospels. Um, but what a beautiful picture of this marriage between Simon and, and his wife. Um, later on, as Simon and Andrew go to meet the disciples and, and Jesus and go to Cana, did you, did you catch their nervousness? What if the others didn't pack a lunch? Well, we look stupid. <laughs> Isn't that like everybody's experience? Whenever you're new in a group, uh, who will I sit with in the lunchroom uh, on the first day of school? Uh, what, what is it going to be like? Um, and then this, this introduction of Thomas as a very careful man. Uh, Jesus even says something kind of funny, doesn't he? Which is to look at Thomas and say, I know a man in Capernaum like you, <laughs> always counting, always measuring. Who, who's he talking about? Matthew, yeah, yeah. And at the very end when he says he doesn't know what to think, his companion Rima will tell him what maybe for once in your life don't think. Um, that's something we have to sometimes also come to grips with in terms of Jesus. If we try to figure him all out, if we try to pinhole him, if we try to put him into the box we've carefully constructed for what we believe can and can't be, um, we, 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 we're just overthinking sometimes. Um, and then there is this effect of the miracle even on those who didn't know it happened. Um, I love what Abner, the groom's father, says when his wife asks him if something is wrong. He says, yes, I was. Uh, that, that, that's an incredible kind of, kind of little, uh, quick little insight into what, what impact Jesus has on people. Um, I think as well of the role of those servants. Um, uh, they see it, don't they? I mean, because they go get the water and they put it in the jars and then they serve wine out of those same jars. Um, what did the servants have to do? They had to cooperate with Jesus, you know, uh, before the miracle happens. They had to do all that they could do, in fact, before Jesus did what they could not do. And I think that's ever the way it is. It's one of the great paradoxes of life that that the work of God so very often seems to wait upon your cooperation and my cooperation. J.C. Ralla, a former Anglican uh, a, a thinker, once expressed it saying, duties are ours, events are God's. It is ours to fill the water pots. It is Christ to make the water wine. Uh, does, does, that, does that sort of resonate with anybody else here? Because when the servants obey, boy, does the master come through for the bridal party. Um, uh, not only is there wine produced in abundance, about 120 gallons in modern measurements, but it's the very best wine of all. Um, much to the delight and surprise of everyone at the party that day. So, so who knows what has happened here? Let's think about that. Servants do, right? Because they got the water. Mary knows what's happened. 
You think the bride and groom have a clue? Nah. <laughs> bride and grooms never have a clue. I'm just telling you. Uh, I, I always tell I always tell couples before they get married. I said, you know, most most bride and grooms go into a semi comatose state uh, <laughs> just before the wedding happens, and they wake up and they say, "What happened?" Uh, no. And do they need to know? No, not really. Uh, Jesus has come for them uh, and for their family. Who else knows then? The servants, Mary, Thomas knows his name. Thomas knows. And it rattles him to the core, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's going be, to be really difficult for him. Uh, but again, notice, uh, uh, and Simon will say this, fish, wine, what's next? You know? Uh, but go back a little bit. How does Jesus, how does Jesus connect with, with, with uh, Thaddeus? Building, construct. So what is it? It's that Jesus tailor mates his contacts, his miracles, for the person to whom he's trying to sort of reach. Uh, in other words, he speaks the language of whoever he needs to, to know and needs to, to know him. Um, it is our obedience unto God that unlocks the power of God in our lives. Uh, what else about this episode hit you? Anything? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you can't tell your mother no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and did you notice who he's talking to during the wedding ceremony? The children, yeah, yeah. He's sitting at the kids' table. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's fun to see Jesus dancing and enjoying this, this, this celebration, you know. Uh, and that is uh, how Jewish weddings are. Uh, uh, one of my... Uh, Dearest friends, a uh, Methodist preacher, his daughter married a Jewish boy, San Antonio. And they had the ceremony at the Methodist church where my friend Charles was the pastor, and they had the reception at the Jewish community center uh, afterwards. Uh, and it was, it was lovely. Uh, I mean, there was a hoopah, the, the, that kind of canopy, at the Methodist church for the ceremony. Uh, uh, and uh, it's a very prominent family in San Antonio. And I believe every Jew within a 500 mile radius of San Antonio was there. <laughs> I mean, it was, it was quite an accomplished thing. Uh, one, one gentleman actually backed, backed out and hit my car. Uh, and uh, it turned out he was a, he was a federal judge. Uh, and he very immediately was on the <laughs> phone to his, to his insurance company, and it was settled within 15 minutes. Uh, <laughs> you know. uh, but there was, there was a great sense of joy over this whole ceremony, uh, and I think that is, that's indicative of an approach towards life, uh, which we would do well to sort of, sort of buy into, perhaps. Um, it, what else comes out of this episode? This is a beautiful episode, isn't it? It's really, really lovely. Yeah. 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 Why, why would they do that? Uh, why would they put this, this, these words about when you cut a stone, you, you can't start over? Uh, once you, you set into motion something, why would they put that with Jesus turning the water into wine? Yeah, yeah, he he set into motion the first of the of the sign of the of the of the signs uh, uh, the first of the Simeon, uh, and even though it's not, I would say it's a semi-public miracle. I mean, he doesn't, he doesn't go out in front of the crowd and say, now watch this, guys, you know. Uh, it's, it's a private miracle, really, but it, but it is beginning this public ministry, uh, which is going to have the implications 
as it goes down, down the road. That's why John the baptizer is, is, is so agitated uh, when he begins to sort of hear this, that this is what's going on with his cousin Jesus. I would think they would, yeah. I, I mean, I, I, would think, I, I would think that there is within Cana uh, a great rumor mill that begins fairly quickly. You won't believe what happened at that wedding. Uh, and a lot of people won't, you know. Uh, but you have servants uh, and you have Thomas who have seen it. Uh, and really, uh, Simon knows it too, right? Because he knows that they're, that, that they're out of wine. And then all of a sudden, there is wine. Uh, the bride's parents probably know it too. Because um, they know that the wine has run out. Um, and they, they also know that the, that the head count was a little low, <laughs> uh, as is often the case. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's a lot to ask, isn't it? <laughs> a little bit of pressure there. How good is this wine? Uh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, the baptizer. If you think Jesus needs my help, then you haven't heard anything. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's pretty amazing. Um, anything else has come out of this one? This is such a lovely episode. Well, next week... Uh, we're going to turn to an episode entitled Indescribable Compassion. Uh, and it is about the healing of a leper on the road back to Capernaum, um, which causes a woman in turn to force her way through the crowd in order to bring a paralyzed friend to meet Jesus. Uh, it, it, it is a wonderful uh, episode. I hope you'll, hope you'll join us for that time. Um, I mentioned uh, when we uh, a few weeks ago, as we do this, the, the chosen is is entirely. Um, it's really a remarkable project. It's entirely crowdsource funded. Uh, there's no advertisers. There's no corporate sponsors. There's there there's no church sponsor of it. Uh, it's just individuals, uh, and um, every episode cost about a million dollars, I think, for them to actually produce. Uh, because it is done with such a quality thing. Uh, well, tonight, a little bit later on tonight, will be episode eight of season two, uh, and, and finish out that. And um, Eddie has figured out that they are now 100% uh, funded for the first four episodes of season three. Uh, so uh, it, it, this, this is rather remarkable. Uh, they're trying to introduce Jesus to one billion people around the world uh, so that it's free for everybody to, to see. Um, this is uh, complicated math to me. Um, um, it's cost $100 million for the production of the next five seasons. Um, one billion people, every country in the world, at least 100 languages. Uh, totally free outside of the whole Hollywood system. Uh, that's impossible math. Um, but uh, they have um, shattering the crowdfunding record with $10 million uh, so far. Uh, that is creating an app that allows you to watch the first ever multi-season show about Jesus. Um, free in every country in over 50 languages so far. Um, so, um, if, if you are interested, um, you can go on to uh, their, their website. Uh, Julie and I have done this. You can help pay it forward if you want to, uh, and they'll send you something, you know, a uh, T-shirt or something if you want. Um, uh, and again, as I mentioned, uh, if, if somebody really wants to help pay it forward and, and, and pay for an entire episode, uh, you'll be in it. <laughs> you'll be in the crowd. Uh, and it's shot right here in the state of Texas, so it won't even have to go all, all, all that far. Um, so, so if you're interested, uh, there's a few copies up here. I'll just put them on, on the front view uh, that can tell you uh, how, how to do that. Um, let's, let's close in a word of prayer. Father, um, 
duties are ours, events are yours. Ours is to fill the, the pots with the water, yours is to turn it into wine. So we thank you that uh, you are still in the business of turning um, even brackish water into something wonderful, and that's our lives. Thank you for each uh, person who's been here tonight. Uh, will you bless us throughout this week ahead um, and cause us to see you uh, even where it doesn't make sense. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you guys for being here tonight. See you next week.